Hello friends, welcome to Growing with Creekside. I am Jenny and we are going to kick off the week with a nursery tour. We are up here in the production greenhouse area. Um, we thought it would be fun to come show you all of the gorgeous annuals and all the color that they are producing. We are in April now and um, here in North Carolina, Zone 7B, our last frost date is April the 15th. We are watching those temperatures very carefully because we are just itching to get these gorgeous colors into our garden and landscape. So I wanted just to kind of give you an overview on how things are growing because you have watched us plant these up and since they came to us as little liners from um, all the way from the uh, New Hampshire in Pleasant View. So here we go. We are also going to focus today on plants that will help you attract hummingbirds to your garden because kind of April 1st is the kickoff for us as to when the hummingbirds can be coming back to our area. I love my hummers. I call them little hummers. They are coming back. In fact, um, one of our children said that she saw one on Saturday sitting up in a little tree and she has a good eye. So I doubt that she was wrong about that. So hummers are here. All right, great, easy plants that you can have in your garden to attract hummingbirds. Calabrocoas, super bells, or petunias, super petunias. They both attract the hummingbirds really, really well because whether it is the super bell, which is the, um, this is tropical sunrise, or you have jazzberry. Both of these have gorgeous colors that the hummingbirds really love. And also the shape of the flower allows that hummingbird to be able to get in there with their sweet little beaks and lap up all of that delicious nectar that is in these flowers. Um, we have hummingbirds routinely come into the greenhouse so that they can feed off of the hanging baskets that we have growing. So an easy way to get hummingbirds into your garden, super bells, super tunias, and it goes across the board for all of them. There's not a particular variety of either one that really attracts them. I will say though that they tend to be attracted more to the neon colors, not to say that they won't go for the whites or the light yellows, but the brighter the color, it attracts their attention a little bit better, and so it will bring them in. But once they know that you have food in your garden, they will come back, and I, I tell you, I am convinced that our hummers come back year after year because before I even will have my hummingbird feeders up, they come to where they know my hummingbird feeders are and they're like, hello, Jenny, I'm ready, I'm here. And so they are waiting on their food. So these are super bells, super tunias. Now we have customers that routinely can't remember the name of this plant, but they'll call us and they say, hey, do you have that hummingbird plant? Is it ready yet? What they are referring to is none other than vermilionaire. Vermilionaire is a type of kufia, and it is a fantastic plant for attracting hummingbirds because again, nice bright orange blooms on it. They will stay in this very narrow kind of um, trumpet-like shaped bloom that is perfect for only hummingbirds to be, a, a, be able to get into. So we have some um, bumblebees that are buzzing around here in the greenhouse right now. Well, their little, their big old fat bodies are too big to go into these blooms, but it is perfect size for the hummingbirds to come to it. Um, it it's gonna be a full sun plant. Everything that I'm talking about with you today is gonna be annuals. And so vermilionaire will get to be about 28 inches tall and it will have this kind of natural arching habit. So it's not like a mounder, like a petunia is. It is upright and kind of just really free form. If you wanna make a big impact, plant a couple of them close together and you'll almost, it'll be almost like a shrub. Hummingbirds love this plant. They will come, I tell people when we had a pool, my kids would be going crazy and splashing in the pool. I had this in pots on the deck and they would just come and eat. They could care less. They would first come to the plant, then they would go to the feeder. So vermilionaire is a great option for you. Um, it is just, again, it is super easy to take care of, massive attractor for the hummingbirds. <sighs> love this plant. All right, moving on down. And you can tell we've got plenty of it. So my people who um, 
are used to buying your Familionaire here at Creekside, they always worry that we're going to run out. Um, but we have got, we we've got, <laughs> we've got a good supply of it. Um, in fact, we'll have people maybe that doubt us, and they'll be like, "Well, I'm just going to start with one plant," and then it never fails. Like a couple weeks later, they'll come back. They're like, "I need more of that plant," and I'm like, "Yes, you do. Uh, they are just wonderful." Now, another massive, huge attractor for the hummingbirds is salvia, whether it's perennial salvia or annual salvia. This one that we have here is the um, Proven Winners is their Rockin' Salvia. This is Rockin' Blue Suede Shoes. And again, you'll notice um, on that picture, the blooms have that trumpet-like shape to them. Right now, you can see that Blue Suede Shoes is not blooming, but it is a true blue flower. And this plant, all of the rockin' plants will get nice and bushy. They automatically um, will get nice and full gorgeous spikes on them with those blooms that start at the bottom and then they bloom all the way up so there is rocking blue brand new this year let me tiptoe back here for you is oh i spy with my little eye let's see this is fuchsia which is just starting and then there is unplugged pink they have a lot of different um options for you so unplugged pink is brand new this year you can see really beautiful pink color but it's a little bit shorter in statue than the fuchsia so the rockin fuchsia and we have a bloom a bud that is getting ready so you can tell how nice and dark it is the unplugged pink can get 30 inches tall where fuchsia can get 36 inches tall um, both equally as wonderful and fantastic. It just depends kind of on um, the application that you want to use them in, but we really love these. And then there is one more, let's see, Play in the Blues. Here we go. Um, Play in the Blues has a little bit of a different color and texture to the leaves. To me, it almost has that silvery blue foliage on it, but it will have, again, a nice, true blue bloom that is a very big mouthful but again from the picture you can see that it will have a different um, a little bit of a different shape to it but the hummingbirds find these um, salvia just completely irresistible and then there is the rock and deep purple which i'm not sure where in the greenhouse that one is um, but again it's a nice deep deep purple and they love it um, Look at all these. We've got pentas coming up. Pentas are a great one for your butterflies. Um, other pollinators. I believe the hummingbirds like this one too as well. Um, but pentas are great for here in the south because they handle our heat and humidity like a champ. And what they do is really fun. So that they bloom and then they'll grow. And then that extra foliage covers where the old bloom was so it's this constant process of blooming and growing and constantly covering up the old blooms so you never see like spent heads they're fantastic it's one of my absolute favorites there's this it's the sunstar series um really great for the south and then um just to give you an update for my shade people let's see oh there's a beautiful one right here the blooms on these this is the rockin uh nope the Rakapuko, Double Impatience. And this is the Coral. Look at that. So if you think, oh, I have shade, I can't have flowers. Yes, you can, my friends. This is, again, the Rakapuko series. This is Coral. But Coral, of course, is that nice coral color, <laughs> obviously. But then um, look at purple. Look at that beautiful shade of purple so there's white there is apple blossom which is a really nice very soft soft pink we have white we have wisteria which is a beautiful purple um let me show you this wisteria so many options so whether you've got sun or shade we have got plants to suit you 
Um, and if you're not local to Creekside, I would highly encourage you to go check out your local garden center. And if you're looking for proven winners and you wanna know who sells proven winners around you, you can go to proven winners website. It is um, just provenwinners.com and right there on their homepage, they have a, um, like a locator, like a store locator, and you can put in your zip code and then it will tell you what nurseries, and you can do a different like mile radius within 10 miles, 50 miles, who is close to you that sells proven winners. So I would encourage you to check those um, folks out. Now, I forgot to tell you that while we were um, talking about the petunias and the super bells, I want to give you a little update, uh, update here on the baskets. Jerry is showing you those baskets. And when you're, if you want to create your own basket, which is a great thing to do, obviously I did it just a couple of weeks ago, um, you do not have to be concerned with putting, say, only petunias in your basket or only superbells in your basket. You can do a great mix of both of them. So let me see if I can get this one down. Here we go. This is Living on the Edge. This is a recipe from Proven Winners that we potted up. I'm pretty sure we showed you that whole process. But you'll notice in this basket, we have a great mix of petunias and caliber coas. So the petunias are the really red. We have the um, royal velvet. And then the um, dreamsicle is the super bell. So you can put these together. Don't be afraid to mix your petunias and your caliber coas together. They grow really well together. Um, you will want to be careful as far as like putting, um, like you don't want to put a bubble gum with maybe one that's a less vigorous grower. Um, so you want to check on their vigors, but you can see you can easily put them together and they are gorgeous. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to put this back on the ground because that might be kind of fun to watch me try to hang this back up because the baskets are getting big. All right. Moving on over here, let's talk about another great plant to attract hummingbirds to your garden. We have, this is kind of the section here of um, lantanas. Lantanas, again, are wonderful. These are most likely be annuals for you unless you're in like really warm climates, but lantanas are great in attracting hummingbirds. Again, nice, bright, vivid colors. This is luscious marmalade, a beautiful Clemson orange color. Um, but again, those bright colors, not only do they attract hummingbirds, but they attract other pollinators and butterflies. Butterflies find lantana just irresistible. And that marmalade is a nice, big, bold pop of color right there. So we have marmalade available. We also have, um, and if you hear something, the sides are going up and down. They're trying to figure out what they're doing today. And then we have, um, this is a nice color, Cherry Sunrise Lantana, which is a nice um, red color. It's got some red, a little bit of pink, a little bit of orange in there. Um, really pretty. One of my new favorite plants from last year that we trialed was the Luscious Citron. And look at the gorgeous color of citrons. Let me show you the tag first because I know how much y'all enjoy seeing those tags. So citron is a nice soft yellow. It's not too harsh. It's not too bold. So you could even use it in, if you're mixing it with whites, it would be beautiful. Citron is what we are going to use in big, huge um, pockets and the new flower beds in the backyard. So we're going to have this gorgeous pale yellow and it will get, again, last year, it got every bit of 30 inches tall, if not even taller. So it'll go the whole distance all the way to like a hard freeze. So we've got that. Another one of my favorites, this was a new one that was introduced onto the market last year is Red Zone, Luscious Royale Red Zone. So if you are a red lover like my mama is, then Red Zone is gonna be the one for you because this is a little bit of an older bloom, but look at that nice, big, bold red. And you wanna talk about hummingbirds being attracted to this? You got it right here. And then one other color we have for you 
is, if you're in the softer colors, this is the Pink Berry Blend, which is a nice soft pink and yellow. Um, remember, all of your lantanas are that full sun environment. They've got to have that nice hot sun in order to produce their beautiful blooms on there. Um, but once you get them established, they're pretty, they're pretty easy. And I have found that they are, they, there are really no pests on them. So I've never really had an issue with aphids on my lantana. I've never had an issue with Japanese beetles, which is a huge uh, problem for us. It's probably one of our number one pests here is Japanese beetles. They leave them alone. Um, come on up here. Watch that hose, Jer. Um, we have got, I just want to give you an update here. Like, look at all these colors, right? So these are all caliber coas. So we've got that tropical sunrise with some dreamsicle orange, the yellow, ah, oh, and then we've got more. I mean, just big, huge pockets of color here. Paradise, you want to talk about a big attractor, talking about those neon colors. This is the Vista, oh, sorry, Fuchsia, Vista Fuchsia. There we go. Look at that neon hummingbirds would love this plant for sure and then all the hanging baskets did you show them all the hanging baskets just so great they're doing really well um, we have had issues and this is just um, full disclosure because it has been so incredibly windy this season and this greenhouse is open because as you remember you can see the sides roll up and the front doors and the back doors we can open and close and our drippers will sometimes get blown out by the wind so like it happened to um, this one right here where we just walked in and we're like oh no clearly somebody needs some water but this is a great teachable moment because i was talking with a customer this weekend and she was like well how do i know when my plants need water if your plants look like this <laughs> they need water but the great thing about petunias and caliber coas and most annuals is if they get dried out and you catch it soon enough which we're catching this soon enough and you water it in a couple of hours it will have bounced back so most of your annuals are going to show what we call just going limp. They're going to get wimpy on you. Shoot them with some water and they'll bounce back and be fine. But because this is right here near the door, um, it happened to these first two that the drippers just got blown out. So obviously we need to take care of that and give them some water. But I thought that would be a good teachable moment for you. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to move on over to the other production area because we have got some gorgeous verbena that I cannot wait to show you. All right, so here we are in production greenhouse number one. We have a lot of gallon size annuals in here that I wanted to show you. Look at this color. This is new for us, not new to proven winners. This is what they call their, their super venus, which is a verbena. And this one is plum wine. Is that not the most gorgeous color you have ever seen? And once I saw this blooming, I was like, oh, we're going to have to incorporate that into a flower bed and I think I'm going to incorporate it into the new flower beds in the backyard because this is the same color as the ultraviolet phlox, which is a great hummingbird attractor. So this will be really pretty and it'll be pretty with the yellow of the lantana. So we have got verbenas. Look at these sweet um, sunflowers. We have got sunflowers in gallons because as the season progresses, these things grow really fast. This is the new one. Nope, this is the yellow. This is that reblooming sunflower. Beautiful. It will naturally branch. We've got a little head right here at the top. But again, you can put them in containers, but they really do the best in a landscape where they can just grow and get nice and big. We found ours at the end of the season, like it was almost like a four by four size plant. Really nice. In fact, there is a bloomer right here and this is yep yeah. so you can see that beautiful yellow color on that plant on that flower is great so more verbenas we have we're just going to let jerry show them to you we have the um superbena white and all of these will do really great landscape or containers then one that's hugely popular and rightly so is the sparkling amethyst because it has three colors on that one flower it has a white a darker purple and a lighter purple gorgeous 
really pretty one of our favorite ones and then we actually have um, sparkling rose or rosé excuse me which is very similar to the amethyst but it's in the pink family so that is a really popular one and then moving on down here we have the um, black eyed susan vines they are we have all three colors uh, or the three colors that we have rather we have the yellow we have tangerine and then we have the new one which is the coconut appeal which is a light with a dark eye in it um super nice um but yeah we have tons of annuals tons of perennials this weekend we had a wonderful weekend with lots of customers loading up their cars with everything from trees shrubs perennials annuals you name it um, it is definitely go time here in north carolina we have got plants to help you no matter what your situation is so remember this week we will be open wednesday through saturday nine to three so come see us um, but yeah very exciting time put out your hummingbird feeders if you want to make your hummingbird um, feeder um, you know the solution in your feeders really simple one cup of water for one fourth cup of sugar just mix it do not add the dye you do not eat, need the dye in there and you can change it um, on a regular basis so that it doesn't go rancid your hummingbirds will absolutely thank you and love you for it and they will give you months of enjoyment and fun watching them dive bomb each other and just being friendly as always thanks so much for gardening with creekside y'all have a great day we'll see you in the next video bye friends